Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girlfriend along back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day, and we've been able to do that thanks to you guys. So, if there's something specific that you want to see on this channel, drop us a link in the comment section below and We'll look into it. We've got a second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. You guys can hit the subscribe and enjoy our weekly vlogs. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse, and we've got some amazing, amazing conversations which I really personally enjoyed recording. So you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, our second YouTube channel for the visual, and just enjoy the stuff that we're putting out there we've got a patreon called funny and jesse 2.0 it would be nice if you guys became members and we'll appreciate a big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel thank you for subscribing thank you for watching liking sharing and everything else that you guys are doing thank you very much i hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed a big shout out to the person that suggested this and today we're going to be reacting to the the jaw antichrist antichrist Hamza Yusuf. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Uh, another uh, a, a major sign is the Dajjal. Now I just want to read because I think it's very interesting. This is, was written in the last century, uh, but it's taken out of classical uh, uh, Arabic uh, books. Is this the Antichrist? Yeah, this is about the Antichrist. The word in Arabic is from Dajjala. It means to smear a camel with tar. In other words, covering the whole body with tar. Smearing the part that is mangy or scaby. So it has the idea of hiding illness or sickness, covering it over, right? Covering it over with a black pitch. Uh, to lie, to conceal truth with falsehood. Uh, concealing the truth. He enchanted or fascinated. So the idea that the Antichrist is an enchanter or a fascinator. People are fascinated by him. He compressed, he traversed the regions or tracks of the earth or land. Now, the Prophet said that the Dajjal would enter every city on the planet. When they asked him what would his speed be like, he said like a wind that leaves a cloud in its trail. Sahab literally means like a wind that leads a cloud in its trail. And in another tradition, he said he would ride a white donkey made of iron whose span between his two ears was 40 cubits. Baghlatum min hadid, is the hadith says. And then he says. Um, to confuse, to mix things, having one eye. Um, the Prophet Muhammad, did you have a question? How do you spell this? What's this word? Dajjal. 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 Dajjal is the word in Arabic for Antichrist, which is better translated by the Arabs, uh, by, in the Arabic language as the imposter Christ. Oh, Christ, yeah, Messiah Dajjal, the false Messiah. Very much so. Uh huh. Um, in in Islam, the concept of the Messiah is a is a one time thing represented by Jesus of Nazareth. Or yeah, Jesus is seen as the Messiah. The Messiah. So uh, this is an anti. This is going to be anti Jesus. Jesus. Christ. Yes. Okay. And and it's interesting because if you study the Islamic Jesus, I think it gives you a very good picture of uh, the idea of an anti. Jesus. Because anti in Arab, in uh, Greek, antis also means in place of, instead of. It doesn't really mean against. The original meaning of anti in Greek as, as, a, as a prefix means instead of. And that's closer to the Arabic interpretation, which is imposter or in place of, pretending to be. The Islamic Jesus, and I, and I actually translate, I'm, I'm hoping to get it out this year, but I translate all of the Arabic sayings of Jesus because there's a very large, there's actually more sayings in the Islamic tradition of Jesus than there are in the New Testament. Um, and most of them deal with the dangers of the world, of materialism. So I find it really interesting that, you know, this idea of an imposter, that Jesus is, the whole thrust of the Islamic Jesus is salvation through giving up material wants. 
And the idea of an antichrist is salvation through desire of material goods, that it is material goods that will make you happy, that it is material goods that will save you. So I think there's a very materialistic element in here. And also the idea of being one-eyed is that part of uh, uh, biocular vision uh, is depth perception, which you lose uh, when, with one eye. And so the idea that they, they, there's no, that the Dajjal or the Antichrist does not have a depth perception, he's a two-dimensional being. He sees things in two dimensions. Um, and some of the Muslim scholars do not consider it an individual, and, but most do. And some, uh, and you'll see it as we go on here. Having one eye is one of them. Also to gild a thing. So in other words, you take lead, you put gold over it. That's yudajjal. So to make something that's cheap or insignificant look very uh, uh, worthwhile or significant. Um, Cover the land with water. He put his land into a right or proper state, prepared it, improved it with dung. So to spread dung uh, uh, on the earth, to spread feces uh, on the earth. Dajjal, dung for manuring land. Uh, and then Dujal is refuse, lowest, basest, or meanest sort of people the lowest, basest, or meanest sort of people. Dajjal, a gilder, a liar, conceals truth with falsehood, who deceives, deludes, beguiles, circumvents, outwits, much or often, very deceitful, the great deceiver. And then a great company of men, Dajjala in Arabic means a great company of men journeying together covering the ground by their multitude, or a company of men journeying together, carrying goods for sale. Right, so trafficking goods all over the place. Messiah al-Kadhab, the false Christ or antichrist, is to be a certain man. Right, comes forth in the last days. So having one eye or eyebrow. So the, the, you get the idea there. This is a classical coming out of classical dictionaries. The idea of the Antichrist is that towards the end there, 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 there will be a type of false salvation through uh, love of the world and material things and these things. And, and I think the Muslims definitely have a very strong sense of the Dajjal because at the end of the prayer you actually make a prayer that says, and I seek refuge from the tribulation of the Dajjal uh, in the last period. And the Prophet Muhammad said, uh, every prophet has warned his people about the Dajjal, but I will tell you something that no other prophet told his people. He only has one eye. So that was the, the tradition that he said about the Dajjal, that he would have one eye. And there's a very interesting... Uh, some of the Muslims said, you know, the television is like a Dajjal. It's a one-eyed type beast. Um, and uh, there's an interesting uh, section in Lewis Mumford's, the second volume of his work on the Mega Machine, which is the eye of the one eye of Ray, the all-seeing eye of Ray. And he talks about that the Mega Machine, one of the things about the Mega Machine, he said traditionally, was that they couldn't, they didn't have an all-seeing power, these, these previous kings and rulers. And so he said, what's happening though, is that, and he wrote this in 1961, he said, in the near future, uh, we have theoretically at our hands, uh, a machine that will able to monitor all of our uh, life, which is the computer. And he said that, and this is what Foucault called the panoptic society, the all-seeing society. And it was designed after a, the idea of a prison system that Jeremy Bentham designed, which was where you had a center piece, utilitarianism, you had this center, you only needed one guard and around the guard were all the prison cells. So in the middle was a tower of which this one guard could watch everything at one time. And so the idea of the all seeing, you know, the state apparatus in which we're all monitored. A really interesting book about this subject is called um, the, uh, I can see the cover because it's got that pyramid with the eye on it. It's The Naked Consumer very interesting book about how we're watched. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but when you buy things with your credit cards, they go under bio datas, and so they can work out, like I started getting all this stuff about like, 
different types of books. I'd get these like things from spiritual book companies and things because they worked out, you know, you buy them and then they sell. They do bio data on you, find out what type of books you like to read. And then they sell that list to people. When we had a baby, um, the first child, the, like a week later, we got all these things about, and my wife was like, wow, what? You know, this is a classic problem with religion, right? It's a sign, right? No. <laughs> There's somebody that monitors for the corporations all the births in the county and they sell your address to people, right? It wasn't a sign, right? Or it was a sign that we're in big trouble, right? We're, everything's being watched by these. So the idea just of, you know, this kind of panoptic culture where, and, and the interesting thing now is this idea of computers with the actual um, camera on it. Very interesting phenomenon, because who else can watch, right? Who else can watch while you're having your conversations and things like that? So there, there is an idea of this, you know, the Antichrist and this, the, the end. And most Muslims do believe in a second coming of Jesus. The vast majority of Muslims. There are many hadiths that confirm it's, it's not actually uh, mentioned directly in the Quran, but most Muslims do believe in a second coming of Christ uh, towards the end of time. Mm -hmm. Well, wouldn't that sort of like mean that Muhammad wasn't the seal of the prophets? Good point. And that was something that the, the, pro, the, the scholars did deal with. The, the, he will not come back as a, as a prophet bringing a sharia. According to the Muslims, he actually comes back and he confirms the, the tradition of the prophet Muhammad. That's how the Muslims view it. That he comes back. Not, the question was, wouldn't that mean that the prophet Muhammad wasn't the seal? But... It would, in the sense that the Prophet is after Jesus. The Prophet Muhammad said, there's no Prophet between me and Jesus. And he said that all of the Prophets are brothers. We have the same father, which is the religion of uh, the deen of Islam, with different mothers, meaning the different sharias or the different sacred laws. Very interesting. I liked when he spoke about how we're going to be so engulfed with worldly things. I think that's already happening and we see it, but then some people change, some people don't. I mean, worldly things, it's things that were attend now, but it doesn't mean that we might have them tomorrow because they may go away. The more we tend to love these things of the world, the more we push ourselves away from God. Another thing he spoke about is that we're being watched. That's the realest thing anyone has ever said. We are being watched. Whatever you do, you're being watched. Someone is monitoring what you're saying on the phone. Someone is hearing your conversation, reading your text, whatever the case is. And now, I think I read somewhere, it was a mass communication book where um, I think certain governments, I guess, can track you through your phone, whether it's on or off. That's something. Otherwise, this was very, very amazing. Let me know what you think about the stuff he said, what Hamza Yusuf said. Uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.